Uh, we're tired. We've got a lot of we got a lot of snaps. You know, they changed up the rules of how many practices. You can't get as much rest. So we're pretty banged up. In two weeks to get people healthy and go from there. What have you seen from the scrimmages, Coach? Well, we didn't scrimmage today, but uh, there's a lot of good, a lot of bad. And you know, we've had a lot of guys out. So. Really been growing up the young guys. <clears throat> Have you got any decision on the quarterback yet? Uh, you know, both will play in the first game, but Sean will be the starter. So, but you know, Mike will get a chance to have his reps. So, uh, how pleased have you been with Sean throughout the ball game? Yeah, pretty good. I mean, we made him the starter. <clears throat> Coach, obviously. And probably less interceptions, I think, as much as anything. I think he's probably only thrown three the whole entire camp where we but our safeties alone have had like 19, so the other guys need to uh, close up shop a little bit better. Is, is, does it make you happy that the battle was that close and knowing that you have two capable guys? Well, you got to, yeah, you got to have two. I mean, it's just what it is. You know, I don't know anybody that's made it through the year that don't have to have two. So. <clears throat> Obviously, you had a big blow early in the week with Ross Coach. How's, how's the guys yeah. coming in? Yeah, everybody's good. Every, you know, it's we got two ways to do that. You know, there we've had two major injuries, and both of them were non-contact. One was running a route, being a scout team guy, and one was just cutting. So, I mean, it's one of those things where you know, next guy's got to go up. That's what we've always said around here. And obviously, it's a big loss because he was the starter. That's why he was the starter. He was a good player. But bottom line is, they expect us to win ball games. And, Sometimes your chemistry gets better when you lose somebody because your, your ranks draw closer. We'll see if this group does that. Feel pretty good about the D line depth, though. Uh, well, every time you lose one, you're always worried about it. So, how's uh, how's Terrell and George kind of stand? They both stepped up. So uh, we're, we're, you they're, they're, you're talking about a really good player, and you guys are extra freshmen. We, you know, we'll, they're kind of like quarterbacks in this one. We'll find out here in about a week, two weeks here. But they've come a long way, so. You said some pretty good things about Terrell in the spring, too. Yeah. What is you know, it? we moved Mike inside, so Epley's inside. Okay. Also, he was out a little out today because you got to get him healthy and you got to do things. But as a general rule, you know, it's, we'll get the best four guys on the field. Ty Summers has moved in. Uh, we're working with the other linebackers. But, I mean, it'll, it'll, it'll fluctuate. You know, it's – gentlemen, we can't, we can't do like you guys do. We can't uh, – we can't go out and say the sky's falling just because – one guy goes down. I mean, Graham Colas and walk on backup quarterback won the Alamo Bowl down 31 to nothing. So, how's Brodnax been in camp? Been okay. All of them were, you know, decent. He stayed. He stayed healthy. You know, LJ's been down. Ennis has been down. Uh, you know, probably the major guys. Walla was early. He's back. Uh, Rico was down. He's been down the last couple last couple days. I mean, it's it's just camp. With uh, Ty, you, you said last week you're going to work him some of the end anyway. So you think that'll be a pretty easy transition? Oh, yes, he's done well. With LJ out, he's been doing. He's been a starter. So you gain a four-five-two starter, 400, 240 pounds coming off the edge. So with, with Ty and uh, Rico being out, how's your? Is it Juwan and? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it's, yeah, all the freshmen. It's, we don't have starters. You know, everybody's just, right now. We're working them, get them better, and get where we need to get to. So, all the guys that have been down. See, they're they're looking fine. None of the guys down. You expect to be back for week one, though, right? Yeah, I don't. There's not anybody that I don't expect to be back for first ball game. So, we got two weeks now to do what we need to do. Is Casey back? Practicing no, he, I think he'll be back Tuesday. Coach, it's hard not to notice when you have some guys posting stuff on Instagram. Jalen yeah. was another one last night. Well, yeah, my, okay? I told him. Well, yeah, here's what I told him. It's a problem. Same thing with you guys. So every opponent now knows which leg it is. It's just not very smart. It's not very smart because now every opponent knows which foot, which leg, which whatever. So whether you like it or not, then they, they go for it. So the bottom line to it is this, this – uh, Part of our lives where everybody thinks that you got to have somebody feel sorry for you. You got to show everybody what's going on. It's just, it's not really smart on his on his benefit. But he'll be back and he'll be fine. So, I just his dad told him before I did. <laughs> it, uh, I, I know you said the injuries were obviously non-contact, but I feel like no, 
or well, no the problem. two big one. But yeah, you, you about think it, just things, on contact. Yeah, yeah. You think if you got if NCAA gave you guys more practice time, people uh, might not be pushing as hard out of the gate. Or that's that's another. But I mean, we didn't we we didn't put those guys in harm. One, one was mm-hmm. we were in the indoor and in 70 degrees, and he was running a he was running a, uh, a crossing route of uh, some team that we were emulating. I mean, right. So it's every year it's go it's sick, sick, cyclical, mm-hmm. okay. And the fact that some years it's like all killing, some years it's all the right thumbs, some years it's a shoulders. It's I don't. If I could figure it out, I'd write a book. I wouldn't be doing this. I mean, it's like, I'd be Gil Everton. <laughs> hey, at Todd End, you lost Cole last year, and the guys you have coming back are not very experienced. How have they looked so far? Well, Cole Novak's really, I mean, uh, yeah, Novak's done, probably been the guy most of the time. Um, Jock has been a guy that's moved in, has also did some things for the two back and also the tight end stuff. Um, you know, really, pro wells we need him to get, but he's, he was hurt in the spring and, and really hasn't practiced much here in the fall, and so it's going to be hard. You know, we, we it's kind of like, you know, you don't rise to the occasion. What you do in your training, you lower, you sink to the level of your training. If you put guys in the ball game that hasn't practiced much, they're first off, you're saying coaching's not important. Second thing, what you're doing is you're putting where the, that guy's level of training is very low. And so he's going to make mistakes because he hasn't practiced enough for him to do it at a high level. So, you know, for us, some of these guys, when you have younger teams, when you have younger teams, they have to learn how to do that process. Kind of like putting things out on Instagram, on Instagram and doing stuff. It's, it's just you got to understand that. Be a little bit smarter about it. Understand what you're trying to get accomplished and understand you put all of us in harm's way. But you know what? Doesn't mean we don't like them, doesn't mean we don't love them, it doesn't mean we don't care about them. It just, as Mrs. P says about me, she says, I'll always love you, but some days I don't like you. <laughs> right? Because as guys, we all screw up. And young, young players, they all screw up. So it's our job to get them straightened out to where they need to be and what they need to do. And it's, been a, it's been a pretty fun camp, really. They've pushed through and we've, got, we've had a, our offensive line, I'll be honest, has been the big surprise. They've really gotten better. We still got to keep getting better at one of the tackles. I wouldn't say which one, so again, they don't pick on, but, you know, in the case of coming back, I think we, you know, our whole goal is to get, so we had eight. I think we'll have eight. I think uh, Anthony McKinney has come on a lot farther when we were than when we ended the spring. Um, in case of coming back, Wes Harris being in the mix, I think you're going to be guards and centers. I think you're going to be better than what we were at the end of the spring. So. That's what you want to get accomplished in camp. You want to get better at that. So, how do we go from there? With your defensive ends, with Tom moving out there, it, it, does it allow you to put him there with some of the younger guys, showing some ability to do to back him up? Well, it's, you just move people around. It's never, you never waste an opportunity for other people to get better. So, O'Shawn's still doing okay. Yeah, you know, he's still a lot to learn. A lot to learn when the player in, but he's he's come a long way even in the last week. So. How about Brandon? Oh. Same. Uh, I wouldn't feel if they play at the level that we needed to that a, 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 a group one defensive man at TCU plays, but a lot farther along than where we were a week ago. Defensive line, obviously, a lot of teams use rotations, but offensive line, you guys or most teams like to just keep the unit together. Have you had we to? Boy, s- no, we boys. You watched us. You watched us. We boys rotated. Offensive line? Yeah. You don't like a... Not during series, but after series. Mm-hmm. I realize it's preseason, but with the new redshirt rule, are you getting a, a, a discernible, better buy-in from the first year, guys? No, because everybody buys in here, one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, have you thought about kickoffs at the 25-yard, the fair catch? I don't know why I mean, you guys, you... number one, yeah. Number one, I don't think people are going to fair catch. Okay. You don't that's, think that's a big rule change? Only at the end of the ball game, mm-hmm. where you can fair catch, where you're not going to fumble. Yeah. You don't have a less chance of getting a fumble, uh, and or we don't we're kicking to a guy that that's a great returner. Well, you think you think Turpin, one of those guys, are going to fair catch and be kicking to the five? He fair catching. In fact, I hope, you know our whole thing is we could we kick it out of the end zone all the time, mm-hmm. so that we didn't have put all ten guys that are running down on harm's way. 
I had a kicker, when we've had kickers that can kick it out, we've kicked it out always. We started at the 25. You, you, so. You, you think we could see more split kicks though? Just why? To try, I mean, to avoid the potential fair catcher. Well, I mean, then you're going to give the people got a chance to give the ball on the 30, 35 yard line. I mean, for me, just kick the ball out. Mm -hmm. Go get a kicker that can kick it out. If they didn't want to have it, fair catch, just move the ball up to 35 and kick it out. Then you take all that most people have a kicker that can do that, and you wouldn't have any problem with all that anyway. So, uh, whatever it takes. <laughs> whatever it takes. Hey, speaking of kicker, a week later, is Cole Bunce still your starter? Uh, it's becoming more of a push. Jonathan Song actually did better in the, against the wind the other day in practice. So, you know, Will Punter uh, really. That's been a battle also, so it's been good. Our snapper, our freshman snapper, has been awesome. He's as fast or faster than what we've been the last couple of years, which is awesome. So, and he's a bigger body, which is 6'4", you know, 240 pounds compared to being smaller. We loved a guy last year. He's probably not as good a uh, cover guy. We're definitely, definitely a better protection guy and a better PAT field goal guy because of his size. So. By faster, you're talking on the snapper. You're talking about the time it takes to get back to the punter. His, we're his job. Well, how many, how many milliseconds are we talking about? Well, it's a difference. It's a difference of getting the ball off in 1.89 and 2.04. Okay. It's when they stand out here, those guys before pre-practice, they got their watches. Hmm. They're going to take that snap and they're going to time every one of them. You do that? Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, so Everybody what, does. So he's a, he's at one eight nine on a punt or a field goal. No, that's he's got to be in the one sevens on a field goal and punts. We're at we're in the low one nines and high one eights, which is I'll be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Just go line up ten yards. He's going to stand at the punter's going to stand at fourteen. Just go line up ten yards and see how fast it takes you just to run ten yards without anybody blocking you. You can go underneath two two seconds. Mm -hmm. It's hard it's hard to get that ball blocked. If, every, if everything in the package is going right, it's hard to get that thing blocked. So that's one less thing for a head coach to worry about. Do you have any uh, answers at the other corner opposite Jeff? No, you know, everybody's kind of been, Jeff's been out for about a week. Um, really, at least since Wednesday, but probably since Saturday, Tuesday, somewhere in there. So Julius has been working. Really, uh, probably Noah Daniels has really come on. Tony's been out. And so you know, it's been one of those where it's, we moved Yo-Yo over to corner, and he's been doing he's been doing a pretty decent job. And really, he and Noah gave us two bigger corners than what we've had before. And so our depth's a little bit better there. Trey Morig has really done a great job at free. Uh, Ray's moved to weak safety because markell has been out for, he hasn't been in one scrimmage. So he's been out. So the key to the story is, is that, you know, probably, you know, as you always do, you don't ever, you don't ever hold anything against anybody, how they do things, and so you find out who steps up to the plate. Every other guy you mentioned it seems to be out. It seems like a rehash that's of what I told you. That's what I told you. So we've, a lot of young guys have grown up. So. Is, uh, has Justin Rogers been able to do everything, or has no, he still been limited? No, he's limited. He's a lot better than he was in the spring. Mm -hmm. A lot better than he was in the spring, but we long, good way to go before he could go into a live snap. He hasn't been able to do, he's thrown seven on seven, but he hasn't done any team. So, yeah, at this so, point, is it just worthwhile to keep the governor on him because well, he got... No, we don't have to do any... You don't ever... See, that's that's an adult saying. So you guys hold back young people. What you do is you let him do what he can do, and you just keep getting better. I'm almost afraid to ask, what's the running back situation look like? Oh, we haven't... In our scrimmage, in our scrimmage Wednesday, it was all walk-ons. Jet's been out for two weeks. Shea was in a green shirt, and Amari's been out for the last week. So, and Snell's been out. So are you is keeping these guys out, cautionary? No. Is, been out. Jets was a freak thing. Helmet uh, hit him. Uh, Shea Woe's been upper body. Mari was upper body. Snell was lower body. Camp. You guys think last year we did a 100 play scrimmage on this day and still did all the rest of it. So I only did kicking game. I only did kicking game. That's telling you a little bit about that we need to get healthy, right? Yeah.
But we did a lot of we did a lot of plays scrimmage wise before, so.